All right, we got this cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we actually had to get the descaler out to get this junk off here. This uh, dirt that's out here, this stuff just, it turns like cement when it gets hardened on onto stuff. We had to literally chipping this stuff away. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this ring off here and then we could slide the uh, brake discs and plates out and uh, that we can get it all cleaned up inside there. We'll pull the bearing off. We'll get all this cleaned up. We'll restack the brakes in there. We'll put a new seal on this plate and put it back on. And then we'll uh, we'll heat up and put a new bearing on there. Then once we're done with all that, we'll switch over to the hub. We'll get the races out of the hub. And also put a new bearing on this hub here. And then, uh, and then we can change this ring here. I've got a new ring for that. And then we'll go ahead and set the preload on the, uh, it's not really preload, it's like a, a clearance on the bearings. These are metric bolts on this. Nice American made tractor. So uh, on Caterpillar machines are funny because they're, uh, like this one's actually assembled in, in England. Uh, but the engine comes from uh, Decatur, Illinois. So the transmission's made, uh, most of the parts in the transmission are made in Germany and some are Belgium. I don't know where they assemble the transmissions, but the transmission's all metric on the 735. The engine's all SAE, then the rest of the tractor's SA, uh, is metric. All right, we finally got this off. Of course, the plate was stuck like crazy. So the very first plate has this dampening rubber on it. And that dampening rubber just sits up against the housing there. And then, then you have a, a disc. And then you pull that disc off. And we'll mic them before we put them back on, but they, they actually look pretty good. And then you have a plate and a disc and a plate and a disc and a plate. What we'll do is just take them all off and just lay them in order how they were on top of the cover plate that's over there and then um we'll clean them up before we put them back on you know before they right before they go in that way they're that way they're clean don't have to worry about dust and crap landed on them every time the water truck goes by we get a nice dose dust on us there you go that's the inside like down nope right away yeah I forget how many there are. I think there's 11 discs total, if I remember right. Well, maybe I did hand that one backwards. I don't know. It don't really matter. They can be out of sequences. I mean, they don't have to be like where they were, just as long as they're in right. Yeah. And that's the inner one. It's got that dampening rubber yeah. on it, too. And that sits right here against the piston. Um, if we were going to rebuild the piston and stuff, there's keepers on the back that hold it in. And it, it's got two, uh, like a high pressure um, seal, like you'd seen a transmission on a piston. Uh, made it like nylon or whatever it is, but um, we don't have a problem with that. So we're not going to worry about it um, We're just gonna get the bearing off now. We'll get all this stuff cleaned up inside here, and then we're gonna go back together with it All right, so to take this bearing off first thing I'm gonna do is get my torch and just uh, nip it a little bit here and here On each end and then uh, all the rollers in this cage will fall off And then I've got a puller that we'll put on here I'll get tension on the puller and then when it's sitting at all the tension on there I'll get the torch and just heat up uh, a little bit of the bearing and then it'll just pull it right off. <laughs> if I don't use the oxygen bar to cut this, I don't get as much crap splashing around. So it's a little less uh, steel to clean out of there. It doesn't matter because if this thing isn't full of steel, I don't need to pull all the discs out and clean it. If I can cut this off without making a mess, then I save myself a few hours of time. Usually I'm doing this by myself. It's a little uh, fidgety. <sighs> Come on. Okay, I'll get some tension on that. And heat the race up.
and as they say in France land, voila. <laughs> Right? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the easy way to do it without cutting it off and filling this whole cavity full of, you know, pieces of molten and steel. All right. While we're cleaning up the other stuff and getting uh, getting the other part put back together, um, I want to, these re races here, I want to get, I mean, what I'm going to do, I'm going to heat these up. I'm going to heat up a red strip right across here, just a red stripe across there, and I'll just let them sit. And then what happens is when that red hot part, when it's so cherry hot, the molecules expand. And it, and it forces it to, because it's in this, uh, you know, already pressed in here, it causes it to compress the molecules. And then when it shrinks, the molecules are actually more compressed. So then it actually draws, um, draws back in. And this ring here, this race will just fall right out. It makes it smaller on the outer diameter and it'll fall right out. So right now I'm just going to heat them up so that it can just sit here and cool off while we're doing other stuff. So there's one on the other side too. So I'm going to do both of those. But here's the proper way to set a torch. You turn your settling on, you add a settling until this black smoke goes away mostly. And then you add oxygen until you get that little tip on the end. You hold the cutting bar and you add oxygen until that tip is just like that. That's how you set a torch. And if you don't want it hotter because you're using thicker, thinner metal, use a smaller tip. But for something like this, it doesn't matter. It's just for cutting. Okay, so I got my cherry spot there and I can just keep driving that on. That's how you do that. All right, so we're going back together now. We got it all clean. So we put the first plate in, and it's the one with the rubber uh, dampener thing on the back. And then we go with a disc, and then we go with a plate. We're going together. The, the plates will line up with, with this part here. And this part's static. And then the discs, once they're all in, we just line them up with a screwdriver, get them as close as we can. And then that way, uh, when we go to slide this hub into there, then um, it'll go in easier. We just got to work it and kind of jiggle it as it goes in so um yeah so the, the steel plates are stationary they don't rotate these uh discs do rotate on the they're connected to the wheel to the tire and everything like that and so then when this thing gets compressed um you know it locks it up and that that's your brakes all right so we're gonna knock this race out Okay, with this stuff all cleaned up, the discs are back in. Uh, I put a new O-ring on the back of here. Uh, cleaned up this seal area here where the, where the dual cone seal is gonna go into. I'll go ahead and just run it in real slow. I have a crisscross pattern here. Torque with my torque wrench. Yeah. Alright, so we got the races knocked out. And then the new ones, um, if you have liquid nitrogen or you have a way to freeze them, that makes it easier, but we don't out here in the field. So um, you can't just beat them in. I've got this aluminum punch that I've had forever. Um, we use that aluminum punch because it won't do any damage to the to the uh, race itself. So we'll beat that all the way in and we'll flip it over and beat the other one in. Uh, as far as the bearings go, the cones. Uh, let me see if this is yeah, this is the inner cone here. So what I have to do on this one is I'm going to heat it up uh, with the torch, the inner race on it, and then I heat it up to about 270 degrees, and then it'll just slide right into place. Get 
Just about the time you get it to the right temperature, you'll see it. Just, it's funny, like the oil that's on it or whatever, it'll just give a little bit of smoke off of it. If you have a, a gun like this, you kind of judge it by that. If it starts changing color a little bit, that's it went a little too far, but it's still work. There's plenty of damage that's you know, possible. Yeah, 230 all the way around. I'll get up to 270. No, I'll, I'll put it on. I'm starting to see that color that I usually see when it's just about there. Change is just a little bit in color. It's really weird. It's a, kind of a change of uh, gray to it. Kind of rotate it as you put it on just to make sure it's seated home and that's it almost let's get that ring to it you know it's down when you get that ring to it all right i finally got the ring off of here so i'm going to go ahead and get this bearing off i'm going to heat it up and let it drop off if it goes right it's just going to fall right off when i do it if not then i've got to cut it let this cool down a little bit before I go and heat up the new bearing to put on because otherwise this is already swelled up a little bit. Seals in place. Oh, 
there. Wasn't that cool? And then, uh, well, actually, while that's cool, we'll put the uh, dual cone seals in. All right, so Cat makes a special tool for installing these things, but they're really expensive, and I'd have to own about six of them. They're like 800 bucks each or something. But, put it in just for lack of that. These screwdrivers too. The real important thing is not to scratch up this area here because that's where they seal up at. There, that's in. All right, we forgot to film putting the inner one in, but I don't really want to give away all my trade secrets anyways. <laughs> Anybody could put this outer one in. This inner one, if this seal leaks, it's gonna flood hydraulic into my differential. And then the differential's gonna overflow over here. That's what half this mess is over here, from it overflowing out the breather for the differential. So hopefully I don't screw them up. One thing that Cat did, like these outer seals, they're from Cat. I think they're got like sixteen hundred dollars or something like that. It's a ripoff, and they won't sell you just the rubber anymore. For like a six fifty seven something like that, you can still buy the rubber. They're thirty dollars. Um, but fortunately, I was able to get you know aftermarket company. There's a couple that are really bad. Just some out there that I would never use, but uh, the ones I'm buying are pretty good. Uh, but on this inner seals, Cat actually sells the yellow O ring for the inner seal for thirty dollars. So don't tell Cat, because then they'll know and they'll quit selling them to us. Because this this is about six hundred dollars, I think, right here. And if the metal part's good, the metal part's good. Yeah, these are hard to get on. I almost need like to be an octopus with six arms to put these things on. Around. So I'm watching all those off-road videos and those guys in Herc in Utah talk more like a hick than a red redneck does. Got all four of the dual cone seals in. I just have to assemble that uh, gear onto that center hub and then we can set it inside here and then we'll hang this onto the spindle. And then once we get all that together, then we need to set the uh, shim it up to get the right preload on the bearings. 
All right, so I put the ring on that center hub, and then I set it inside the wheel. Um, some people hang the wheel first, um, but I put it inside there because it kind of counterbalances it a little bit. And then as I'm going in, I have to line up this spline as well as these splines. It's a little bit of an, uh, you gotta fight it a little bit, but, um, but you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Didn't want to bore you with the technical stuff of figuring out what the uh, you know how many shims to put in here. I can show you a bunch of math here on the bed of my truck. All right, you're filming. All right, I already cleaned the spline. I just kind of stuck that in there just to hold this up. Now I've got to get this old sun gear off. There we go. There's the old sun gear. Four hundred dollars. Unfortunately, this on the left side axle on the front here is the one with the double spline, so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get in. You can see it here; it's got two sets of splines, and that's for the that's for the differential lock. Okay, I got the first spline in. Okay, got the second one started. Oh, that's actually smooth. pretty easy. So this is the easier way to do it. I've seen guys that put the sun gear on first or they leave it on, you know, if, if it's something they didn't have to change. And then they're sitting there trying to get all three gears lined up with the sun gear at once. And then I came out one time and I, they were watching me do one and they just about crapped when they saw how easy it was. <laughs> they spent over an hour or two hours or something like that one day trying to get one in. So now all I gotta do is just keep trying to different spots here until I see an even amount of clearance between these two upper gears and I know that's the spot it needs to be in lift up a little bit just start it and then if you just pushed it in it would push take the axle in and then you wouldn't be able to get the snap ring in but if you just tap it like this it'll get the gear in without pushing the axle in and I need to find a snap ring the snap ring's a little jacked up, but it's all right. It really can't go anywhere, so I'm sure I've got a new one in the truck somewhere. With okay, and then see once the snap ring is in place, you know it's in because it'll go into the gear, into that recess, and it's captive right there, so kick it out. So now all we have left is just to put an o-ring, clean the cover up, put an o-ring on it bolt the cover on and this is done the wheel parts done I still have to put some clamps on that tube on the back and then we got to mount the wheel but I still have the suspension strut over at Everpack being rebuilt so I'm not going to put the wheel on yet uh, once I put the strut back in I'm going to clean all this off and then, uh, then we'll put the wheel on but anyways for now that's it um, I'm not going to bother filming putting the cover on because it's like eight bolts <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching um, I hope this was entertaining or whatever and um, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please uh, subscribe. And have a good day. Thank you.